Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 68 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just sitting here, chilling, getting ready to do some more thermal expansion stuff. Uh, so last episode, we played around with the fact that thermal expansion is now part of the pack, which is cool, um, and that means we can do things. Um, pretty much worked on what I call the thermal foundation. Heh, <laughs> playing words there. Um, and focused on getting like, just the basics of what I need for thermal expansion. So I taught, I taught the AE, or the refined storage system a few recipes. I taught um, myself how certain mechanics worked in thermal expansion, because that was needed. Uh, and now we're going to get into a few more machines for the infrastructure, and then I want to start upgrading them and taking a look at some of the upgrades that are available. So I want to get some augments and stuff going. I might even want to check into maybe doing some energy cells, though. I might want to stick with capacitors, just eh, we'll see. I'm not sure. I, I haven't decided if I need to do that yet. Um, not sure if we'll need energy cells or not, but might stick with capacitors. I haven't decided if I want to swap these out. We definitely don't have um, thermal dynamics available, so we can't use the piping or item system yet. However, we do also, by the way, have XNet in the pack now, which if you saw my XNet spotlight, you know it can do certain things about item and fluid and energy transfer. So we'll see. We'll see if we can find a good use for that uh, at the current stage of the game where we're at. Um, however, for now, let's get more thermal stuff going. So a couple machines I'm going to want. So we already looked at, um, we set up, what did we set up? The induction smelter? Yes, we did. And the compactor? Yes, we did, because we needed those for certain recipes. Um, a magma crucible is probably going to be in my immediate future. So let's get one of those going. So a couple Invar gears for a magma crucible, a couple nether bricks, and nether bricks... Oh good, I can craft those. Let's get like a stack going. That would be cool. Magma Crucible. Uh, and what else do you need? Just a redstone conductance coil, which is going to need some Electrum. Should probably go ahead and teach Electrum how to be made. So let's do that. Electrum ingot from Thermal. Eh, close. I want it to not be the dust version. The two ingots version yes so silver and gold or dictionary available right and we already hooked all this stuff up over here so this should be as easy as doing this and i should now be able to request electrum times 10. not a problem sweet i love it when a plan comes together automation is the win all right, so back to thermal crafting. We need a magma crucible, so we're going to need two nether bricks. Not a problem. We're going to need a redstone conductance coil, and we should now be able to make a magma crucible. While we're at it, we're probably also going to want to play with fluid transposers. So let's get a couple more in bar gears and get ourselves a fluid transposer. Sweet. Um, energetic infuser, that's for charging up items. I don't know if we need that right now. Uh, glacial precipitator makes snow and ice. Probably don't need him at the moment. Igneous Extruder can make cobblestone, stone, and obsidian. Don't need him at the moment. And the other things, I don't think we need too much of. So for the most part, I think we're good on machines that we might need to have. We're probably also going to want to look at doing upgrades pretty soon. Um, that will be very soon. So let's, at the very least, set up. So we're going to want a magma crucible and a fluid transposer, right? Um, and these guys can kind of chill here. And I'm going to, again, lock off all the sides so that it's not, you know, importing or exporting anywhere with these guys just yet. What we'll probably wind up, though, with is pushing out to that end and pulling into this side. And you'll notice that we have this orange button here, auto output enabled. So that means that when the magma crucible produces something and basically converts uh, solids into liquids, it melts stuff down. There's a bunch of things you can get with it. Uh, once we've done that, it'll automatically push it into the fluid transposer, which we'll probably wind up doing stuff with. Cool. All right, so you guys are gonna need power then. You're still linked to that? Nice. Boom and boom. Beautiful. Cool. All right, let's go look at some of the other components that we might need. So I wouldn't mind teaching this guy how to make each of the upgrade kits. Now there's a couple routes we can take. We can either get the individual upgrade kits and apply them in turn, or we can get the conversion kits which go directly to the level that we're looking for, right? So if I wanted 
the resonant conversion kit, um, we would need all four prior kits combined to make it. And what this will do is it'll jump it right up to the next version. So if you didn't see my spotlight uh, on thermal expansion, number one, shame on you. Number two, uh, the way it works is upgrade kits have to be applied to the prior tier, right? So if you want to install a Signalum kit, you have to have already installed a Reinforced kit. And if you've installed a Reinforced kit, you have to already install the Harden kit. Um, if you want to use conversion guys, these guys just bring it straight to that tier regardless of where they're at. So that's a pretty neat approach. So I'm, I'll probably have to teach the prior versions anyway, and then I'll probably also teach it the resident conversion kit just so we can get them all. So Harden kit is easy. Um, we just need to know how to make bronze gear. Let's go with the thermal foundation one. And easy as it gets, right? Reinforced kit, uh, we're going to need it silver gear, right? So not a problem. And we're getting pretty easy still. So you're also going to need to know how to make either fused quartz or it looked like, because that's or dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to also go with hardened glass. So some kind of hardened glass would go well here. Um, let's do, let's just do regular hardened glass, right? Hardened glass. So there's a bunch of different kinds. It's basically obsidian dust and some kind of metal. Uh, the regular hardened glass is done with lead. And I think we've got a decent amount of lead, right? We should. Yeah, we do. So let's just do regular hardened glass. I think they're just all or dictionary with each other. I don't think that there's any reason for the different types, um, except for like maybe future plans. I don't know. Um, so that's or dictionary. What do we have by way of obsidian processing? So we could do obsidian powder from Ender.io, which strangely doesn't seem to have a recipe. Can I sag mill you? Uh, where's my sag mill? Cool, the JEI recipe on that is broken maybe? Or you know what, maybe it's overwritten by the Thermal Foundation pulverized obsidian? Obsidian dust from Industrial Craft 2, okay. So that's fair. Uh, maybe we'll want to do a pulverizer over there just to handle certain things, just to stick with the, the thermal foundation doohickey. So all I need is a piston and we're good to go, right? Okay, so let's get a couple more crafters and a couple more importers. Who left the door open? What, were you raised in a barn? Okay, crafters should be getting close to done-ish. Let's go set up our pulverizer here. Give him some power. Just so we have access to all that good stuff. Crafters are still work in progress. Cool. Making all the things you need. These guys are definitely slowish. It would be nice if I could speed them up a little bit more, but I don't think I can. All right, let's teach the recipe for obsidian dust. Let's do the thermal one, pulverized obsidian, right? So that's one to four. So we should now have everything we need to make at least the second tier of upgrade, right? So we're going to need our crafters and our importers are probably in progress. Uh, so this is the redstone, or this is the pulverizer, right? So we will say import on the back, output on the bottom. Just like we do over here. Cool. Um, wow, that is some real dire wire, isn't it? That'll probably get cleaned up really soon. Uh, the obsidian dust recipe can go in here. This guy can get my reinforced glass recipe, so we don't have to do too much there. 
Importers ready to roll. Import on the back, export on the bottom, that's what I want. For now, let's just do that. Cool. And eventually, if we do wind up having crafters behind this whole line, I can clean up this wiring a little bit. So now let's see if I can craft all right, we have to put these guys down here. So I need the Electrum version of it. Uh, I don't want you to use Fuse Quartz, though. I want you to use Hardened Glass. That should not be bad. There we go. Now the, uh, the next upgrade kits are gonna get a little bit more complex in the recipes, I think. Missing bronze. Oh, do you really not know how to make bronze? Okay. Uh, bronze. Because I think it's as easy as doing that. Cool. All right, so reinforced upgrade kit and hardened upgrade kit. We can make both of those. Sweet. So now, let's get the next set. Uh, so that's Signalum. So we're going to have to teach this guy how to make Signalum. And Cryothium Dust, right? So Signalum is pretty easy. Um, it is a smelted Signalum blend. That's pretty much all it is. You can alloy smeltery, copper, silver, and redstone. But I want to do it the way it's meant to be done in Thermal Expansion. So for that, we're going to need three copper, one silver, and a destabilized redstone bucket. Cool. So yeah, let's do that. So let's teach this thing how to make redstone buckets. Uh, we're going to need, in order for this to work, a chest of some kind, like a temporary-ish chest. And the way it's gonna work is, we're gonna put redstone and the buckets into the chest, and then we're gonna route those items in the appropriate machines to be crafted. Cool. So we're gonna need conduits. And we'll probably need a bucket and some redstone. Cool, so here's how it's gonna work. We will, now I'm debating how I want this to flow. I'm wondering if XNet would be fun to use here. It might. Well, there's a couple ways we could go about doing this, right? Um, so we could keep this hidden behind. And I think we can do it with item conduits. Because I think if I configure... So the fluid transposer is where we're going to get items out of for this. And the magma crucible and the fluid transposer get items going in. Um, so let's make the back be inputs on these guys, right? So the redstone is going to go into the back of the magma crucible. Um, it's going to get turned into liquid redstone. And then it's going to automatically be pushed into the fluid transposer. Um, which will have a bucket sent into the back, and then the output will be on the bottom. That's pretty much what we're looking at. And I think that should work just fine. Yeah. Now, to get the items there, let's do this. So let's say the west is disabled, and the east is disabled. And we're probably going to do this underneath behind. Because I want to try and like make this room as neat and well kept as possible. right? So we'll have item conduits coming down here to, let's say, a chest. Okay. 
And we'll put a crafter on said chest. And that's where the redstone and buckets will go. And then we want some filters, right? I'm debating if I want to do this with Xnet, just because I kind of want to try out Xnet a little bit. And that would save me the trouble of having to do filters, right? Should we try Xnet out? What do you guys think? You like that plan? Let's take a little sidebar and try out Xnet. So I'm gonna have to teach it things, but that shouldn't be a problem. So we're gonna need a controller. Uh, and we're going to need, we don't need routers yet or facades. Um, cables would be cool to have. And we're also gonna need connectors. Right, uh, the different colored connectors from Xnet, again, Spotlight exists, so check it out. Uh, the different colored connectors and cables are basically just to prevent two adjacent cables from connecting to each other. Like, so you can run a blue channel and a yellow channel next to each other and they won't connect. Um, and then the other benefit is just for like logical separation. So you can kind of see the visual difference between your networks. So let's do a controller. Missing redstone repeater and missing machine frames, huh? Okay. So you need a machine frame and a repeater. Now you can make a controller? Nice. Let's get one set gives you 16 cables, so that's pretty cool. Neat. All right, let's give this a try. Just as an alternate option, right, for connecting the things. Um, so the controller is definitely going to need a little bit of a brain operation going on here. This could totally be done with item conduits, by the way. Like, I'm not pretending like I need to do this this way. Um, let's make sure that you get power from our Draconic Crystal. Nice. Um, I just kind of wanted to do it with this setup. I thought that would be neat. So we'll have our connectors go. We'll have a connector on the controller. We'll have a connector on the chest. Eh, let's put this connector. on that chest. And you guys can go there. Neat. Okay. Set the name of this connector. This will be called Fluid Transposer. This connector will be called Magma Crucible. Now, does this connector have a different name? No, it's still Magma Crucible. Interesting. I've actually not tested adjacent machines like this with Xnet, and I'm not sure how well it handles it, but I guess we'll find out. Worst case, like I said, we can do item conduits, but it's all good. Nice, so you can actually see both the, the, the crafters here uh, and the fluid transposers and magma crucible right in the UI, so that's cool. So basically what we're gonna wanna do is export items from the chest over to the connectors and the magnet crucible. And then we're gonna to wanna to transport items out of the connector and the fluid transposer. We could probably just import bus that. That would be fine, right? So import bus on this dude and then we'll be good. So you are going to be a down output. Nice. And I don't think you need auto output enabled. Cool. So let's set the, the routing, right? So basically it's going to be xnet item. And on this guy, on the chest, we're going to extract items, right? Uh, on the magma crucible, we're going to insert, and we're only gonna insert redstone. And on the fluid transposer, we're going to insert buckets. Easy as that um, to set up. That's pretty neat, right? Um, there's a lot more, obviously, that we could do with Xnet, and we'll probably do some more advanced builds with it later. But this is a very basic Xnet example. So in theory now, right, if I did right a bucket of redstone, I just want to make sure.
Uh, yeah, you. Cool. I think 10 is the right amount, right? Uh, we were making Signalum, right? Yeah, we need a thousand buckets. Destabilized redstone comes from. You get 100 millibuckets per redstone, and you get 900 millibuckets per block of redstone. So 10 is what we want here, right? So we put this and this in there, and they should immediately start processing, right? We should see the magma crucible cooking. Sweet. And I'm going to switch the export here. Instead of doing a single item at a time, we're going to do a stack at a time. So it moves the entire stack at once. That's pretty cool. So you're going to take a minute. But that should get me my destabilized redstone. We definitely need to speed this up. Which is why we're working on upgrades, by the way. All right, so the last redstone should be going. Boom. This guy should be filling now, and then it should be in the system as a redstone bucket. Sweet. So let's come over here and teach it how to make Signalum. Okay. Um, and we'll put this guy in here. Now you just need to know how to make that destabilized redstone bucket. So your responsibility will be this. Uh, let's just do it manually. So over here, we're going to say that one bucket and 10 redstone yields a destabilized redstone bucket. Cool. Now, um, I don't think we know how to make copper or tin dust. Correct. So let's teach that real quick. So we will say, it doesn't really matter, thermal foundation, whatever, um, that this is a thing. And silver is what we need, actually. And this is a thing. And they can be done in, I'll do it in the sag mill, or not the sag mill, the pulverizer over here, because why not? All right, we're sticking with the theme. So now if you're destabilized redstone bucket, you go in here. So now, the last thing to teach is how to make actual Signalum itself. So you are simply a smelting recipe, which can go into my alloy smeltery, the one that does vanilla or vanilla furnacing, which we need another crafter for next time. We actually need something. It'll probably be soon. So, I should now be able to request something like four signal ingots, and it has to craft a destabilized redstone bucket to get there. So if we pop over here, we should see everything already cruising. And if we get ourselves an acceleration wand, we should be able to speed this up and help out with it. Man, that takes a long time to craft without a speed upgrade in there. Nice. That is awesome. Very cool. All right, so we've got that. Neat. Oh, by the way, I think that's a good thing that I did XNet. Oh, and maybe I can use XNet for a couple other things. It's suddenly occurring to me that XNet might be a solution to some of the problems I've been having lately. I need to look into that. That might be a thing that's gonna happen soon. Anyway, uh, finally now we should be able to do an upgrade to the reinforced, right? So reinforced, or a Signalum version. We need cryothium dust is the last thing we need. So let's figure out what's involved in making that. Actually, that might've been a very good idea over there. Uh, cryothium dust requires a snowball, saltpeter, or niter, redstone, and blizz powder. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky. Let's figure out how that works. So niter or saltpeter. Do we have any salt, Peter? We have salt. How about niter? Okay, so niter from Thermal Foundation is salt, Peter, ore. Um, or you can grind up sandstone or blizz rods. You get a 50% chance from blizz rods. And a 25% chance when you're grinding sandstone. The problem with chance-based stuff is you can't very well teach the system like, hey, put four in here and you should get one. 
Because, like, you might get one, but you might not, right? And then the system will be broken because it's like, I put four in, where's that one nighter? Like, what's up? So we're going to have to figure something out there. Um, or we could look at getting blizz rods because we kind of want blizz powder anyway. Uh, we need this too. Uh, this stuff you can make, though, uh, with the fluid transposer. It's a snowball and two redstone dust gives you a blizz powder. So at least that has a recipe. But saltpeter is probably going to be the tricky piece. Surprised we don't have any saltpeter. It must not be spawning in the deep dark, maybe? Hmm. So, what we could do, how are we for sand? Good-ish, but not great. What's going on down here? Aren't you making sand for me? Oh yeah, right, you're keeping eight stacks and that's about all I have. That's cool. And you're doing a good job. All right, let me think for a minute about how I'm gonna wanna handle this and then we'll be right back. All right guys, I have a plan. It's not gonna be too crazy. It should work out pretty well. Uh, so I'm gonna want, I made some uh, sandstone and dropped it over there so that hopefully you come with me. We're going to want the flint downgrade option, which I love because it was my idea. I love when things that I ask for get implemented in mods. It's so cool. Another example of where this is useful, right? I'm gonna use the flint downgrade option for this, right? Because I don't need to keep 32 stacks or even eight stacks of Nitor, right? Um, so what I'll do here is just add this bad boy and he will be Nitor, nice. Got it. Just gotta be quick on the draw, that's all. Um, and literally, I don't know what to do with all this junk I collected, so I'm just going to trash it. So go away glass and sand and the extra silicon. And uh, that's cool. All right, and let's get the key from drawers. Not that key, this key. So that you get locked into Niter land. You're going to get downgraded, so you only keep one stack at any given time. And then over here, we can throw down a pulverizer. Uh, which will be inputting from the back and outputting everything it makes from the bottom. Cool. And we're going to need to export bus this. But let's get power and item conduits going first. All right, so now you've got juice. Uh, let's export bus. And real quick, I want to get this guy to know how to make sandstone. All right, and then we're gonna want a crafting upgrade. My export bus should be done by now. Exporter, I know, I use the wrong term all the time because I am a terrible person. A few cables. Crafter ready. Nice. And then sandstone, please. So basically what we'll do, we'll configure you to export sandstone with a crafting upgrade, and he should craft sandstone for us. And then he will pulverize it, uh, and he'll wind up doing this. So you're going to actually, I think I might want you to be just the niter can get exported out the bottom. And if I do that, then it should only pull the niter out. Now for the sand, I'll probably just wind up trashing it in a trash can. Um, so let's make one of those. I assumed I didn't have one in the system already. Right, so what we can do is say the top can be the red, and then we put a trash can here, and that gets rid of our sand, right? So that it doesn't backlog the system or clog it up. And in theory, he should wind up, 
I think every time he completes a craft is when he actually triggers the auto output, which is cool. So this thing's going to wind up making more sand and gravel for us um, because we just used a bunch of sand to fill this thing up, right? In theory, we were going to use four stacks of sand, which is pretty close to what we used. Um, so that works. And now we're making niter, and we've got two of them already. Sweet. That's actually pretty cool. I'm pleased with that. So that'll get us the niter we need, and it'll keep one stack at all times. Um, so the last step to make a Signalum upgrade kit uh, will be teaching you how to make cryothium dust. So you've got the nitre you need. Uh, all we need now is blizz powder. So blizz powder, we remember, is two redstone and a snowball, which we might wind up needing to autocraft over here. But what we'll do is we'll come over here. I want to add snowballs to the input on the fluid bus. And then we'll come over here. So cryothium dust requires blizz powder, which is that. And it needs two redstone. Cool. So if I add this recipe now, I should be able to say, hey, I'd like some blizz powder. And this will get two redstone. This will get a snowball, and it'll sit here and wait for the 200 millibuckets of redstone, which is a little bit slow. But we're going to speed up these machines probably next episode-ish. And uh, then it'll craft the blizz powder for me. That can then be used. And you can see it going. It takes a second. Totally need to speed these machines up. So cool, though. Automation at its finest. So now I should be able to, in total, make a Signalum upgrade. And it's like, that's a lot of things I have to craft. Let me think about that really hard. Wow, you seem to get stuck on that, huh? Let's give it a sec. Not that many things to craft. So we didn't teach you how to make an Electrum gear. That might be the problem. Though normally it would say, hey, I don't have Electrum gears. Rather than just getting what looks like it's stuck. But uh, let's teach that guy and see if you want to behave now. Yes. Cool. So that's weird. I don't know why that was being like weird where it would stuck at the start button being grayed out. Probably some kind of strange bug. But long story short, we're getting niter. Uh, we're getting all the resources we need. Everything's working pretty well. The only other upgrade kit that we're probably going to want is Resonant, which just requires Blazing Pyrothium and Enderium ingots. Enderium ingots are a little bit more complex of a crafting recipe ultimately, but we can handle it. So for now, let's wrap up the episode, and we'll come back next time to make the Resonant things automated. Not hard at all, really. Sulfur is just what we need, uh, which we might have some of already. We have a bit, um, and we can get more. We get it from pulverizing sulfur ore, but you can also get it from pulverizing blaze rods, which is cool, or coal. So there's a couple options for getting sulfur, right? Um, oh, you get it from a fractioning still. That's cool. Um, but I think we've been getting sulfur ore all along. So a couple options there. But for now, wrapping up point for sure. Daryl 20 setting off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Lots of automation today, but it's all in the name of good stuff. All right, guys. Take it easy.